These wonderful purple carrots have been in season for the past few weeks here in Germany. And back home in India, these purple carrots mean one thing, and that's kanji. So today, we're going to show you how to make this traditional Indian probiotic drink. A few things to note about kanji. It's really easy to put together at home and doesn't need very many ingredients like a lot of Indian recipes do. However, it does need some time. This is a fermented drink and the fermentation process needs some patience. So before we get started on how to make kanji, let's talk a little bit about fermentation. Kanji is something that my grandma often used to make in the winters. And over the years, I've developed an interest in fermentation and learned a lot more about it. And now realize that my grandma was fermenting without even knowing that she was doing it. So what is fermentation? Fermentation is an age-old preservation technique that relies on microorganisms like yeasts and bacteria to break down carbs or sugars in foods into alcohol or acid. Common fermented foods that you probably have come across before include beer, wine, yogurt or dahi in India, sourdough bread, pickles and the German favorite sauerkraut. There are many different techniques and types of fermentation, but today we're going to focus on lactic acid fermentation. Now you're probably wondering, what does all this really mean? And why should I bother? Well, you've got very valid points, or gute Frage, as Patrick would say. Now, as I mentioned earlier, fermentation occurs when yeasts and bacteria break down naturally occurring sugars and starches in our fruit to create bubbles, or acid, or in some cases, even alcohol. Bacteria and yeast are all around us. You can even see the naturally occurring yeasts on these purple carrots, they're often the powdery white coating that you see over plums, blueberries, or other darker vegetables. And when we ferment, it is these yeasts and bacteria that get to work to break down complex carbohydrates in our food, making them easy to digest, more nutrient dense, and last for longer. So here's what you're going to need to get started. First of all, we've got a couple of glass jars here. This one's two liters and this one is one liter. Glass is our material of choice when fermenting for a couple of reasons. It doesn't react like metals do when acids are produced during fermentation. It doesn't scratch as easily as plastic and thus doesn't get contaminated. And usually I like to pop the jars in the oven on 150 degrees for a couple of minutes to make sure that they're completely sterilized. You can also rinse them with boiling water instead. To cover the jars, you'll need some pieces of cloth and some rubber bands. Now let's take some time to talk about salt. Plain old salt is one of the most important ingredients in this process. Lactic acid bacteria that we're trying to cultivate through this fermentation can tolerate salt in high concentration. Salt prevents bad bacteria from growing and helps preserve our ferments from spoilage. As salt plays such an important role in the success of your ferments, we want you to pay a little bit of attention to the salt that you're using. If you check the ingredients list on a box of table salt, it often contains anti-caking agents and other ingredients that we don't really want. So we recommend using the purest salt that you can find. Sea salt or Himalayan rock salt would work just fine. The main spice or flavoring component in kanji is mustard seeds. So let's talk about the mustard seeds that we're using as well. There are many different types of mustard seeds that you can buy. And to make kanji, my grandmother insists that you use a smaller brown variety. So if you compare with rai, as we call it, these are larger mustard seeds. And they're a lot more spicy or pungent compared to the smaller variety, which is a little bit milder and more sour in comparison. Of course, if you can't find the small brown mustard seed, just go ahead and use whatever else you can find. Yellow mustard seeds would do as well. Now moving on to the vegetables. The inspiration for making kanji was these purple carrots. So we're definitely using those. And along with that goes in some beetroot. And since we know that not all of you are going to be able to get your hands on purple carrots, 
we're doing a version with regular orange carrots to show you that those work just as well. We're using organic vegetables here because we want to make sure that we make the most of the yeasts that are present on the surface of the vegetables. We're gonna wash them really well and if you can help it, try not to peel them. But if you must, and if you can't catch hold of organic vegetables around you, then of course you can peel them as well. We want to show you two different variations of this kanji recipe. First, we're gonna start with the traditional method. Start by chopping three medium-sized purple carrots into sticks. It doesn't really matter how you chop them, but we like to cut them in sticks so that they're easy to take out from the drink later on and can be added to salads. Next, we've got a medium-sized beetroot here that we're peeling and also cutting in sticks. And that's it for the chopping. Now that we've got our vegetables sorted, we can move to the main flavoring ingredient in kanji, and that's mustard. We've got one tablespoon of mustard here, and for this variation, we're going the lazy route and grinding it in our mixer. And once all ground up, it should look nice and mustard yellow, like this. And now for the assembly. Take your glass jar and add the ground mustard. Next goes in the salt. When fermenting, salt is generally added as a percentage of the weight of the ingredients that are being fermented. So in this case, that's a 2% salt solution, which is 2.5 tablespoons of salt that we're adding to the jar. And since we Punjabis love our red chili powder so much, that's also a typical addition to this drink. We're adding half a teaspoon here. Now top everything you've added to the jar with about one liter of water and make sure you mix in all the powdered ingredients really well. Before we add our vegetables to the jar, we want to make sure that the salt that we added is completely dissolved into the water. So just make sure that there's no salt settled at the bottom. Next, add in all of the vegetables that we chopped earlier. So that's our carrot sticks and beetroot and then top off the rest of the jar with more water. You want to make sure that the carrots are completely submerged under water in order for them to ferment in an anaerobic environment. We needed to add an additional half a liter of water to make sure that our carrots were completely submerged. Lastly, cover the jar with a clean piece of cloth or kitchen towel to make sure that all the gases that are generated during the fermentation process can escape and also to keep the bugs out. Secure the cloth in place with a rubber band and you're good to go. Place your jar in a warm place in your kitchen counter and keep a close eye on it for the next couple of days. How long it needs to ferment depends a little bit on the temperature in your kitchen, but three to five days is a good range to go by. We recommend checking in on your kanji every day, giving it a good stir, and you can also start tasting it from day three to see if it's the right amount of sourness for you. If it tastes too salty, it's probably not ready. The longer it ferments, the more sour it gets and the more refreshing the kanji will taste. And as promised, we're doing a smaller batch with a one liter jar and this one's with orange carrots so same procedure here with this one, we're cutting two small orange carrots and a small beetroot into sticks. And we're pounding up half a tablespoon of mustard seeds in a mortar and pestle. We wanted to do it the old school way in this version to show you that you don't actually need any fancy equipment like a blender to make this. And that's it for the prep. Now take your clean, ideally sterilized one liter glass jar and add in the ground mustard seeds. Next, goes in one and a one fourth tablespoon of salt, followed by half a liter of water. Then make sure that all of the salt you've added is completely dissolved in the water to make a salt solution. Then you can add in the chopped vegetables, followed by some more water to fill the jar to the top and to make sure that the carrots are completely submerged. The last step here is to cover the jar with a kitchen cloth and to secure it with a rubber band. And that's it. Just like before, now all you've got to do is wait and let time do its magic. And just like with the other version, give your kanji a stir every now and then 
and taste it to determine whether you are happy with its level of doneness. Once you are happy with how it tastes, you are ready to bottle or serve your kanji. Kanji tastes best when it's cold, so we like to bottle it up and separate the drink from the rest of the vegetables. But don't worry, nothing goes to waste. As a result of the fermentation process, the carrots and beetroots take a new life of their own and are great pickled vegetables that you can snack on or add to salads. And that's it folks, that's our take on an age-old Punjabi drink called kanji. We hope that you enjoyed this little lesson on fermentation in our effort to inspire you to include more probiotics in your diet. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like. And we absolutely love hearing from you in the comment section. So let us know what your favorite fermented foods are. And if you'd like to see more videos from our kitchen, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We have new videos coming up every other Friday. Until then, happy fermenting!